Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Computer Videos. How are you doing this evening? Um, actually, something kind of neat that came up is I made a short earlier today uh, about kind of a novel use for the new Blue Scuzzy version 2. And I mean, everybody is familiar with the original, well, let me hold it up correctly, <laughs> the original Blue Scuzzy. And then, uh, you know, is gaining more familiarity with the new version too. This is an early case. Yours probably doesn't look like this, but um, there's a lot of fun new things you can do uh, with the version two that you couldn't do with the version one. And one of those things is uh, CD-ROM emulation. So that way you can uh, dump like a whole bunch of ISO files, properly named, on your, um, on your SD card. And then you can use the, uh, the app that's built for, um, for the Mac operating system. And you can actually like switch the disks from within the operating system. Uh, it's super cool. You have no idea uh, how great this is. This is such a game changer. I mean, sure you could mount it through the operating system, but sometimes it's uh, there are some specific use cases that you really wanna have something that sees it as an actual CD and not maybe as like a virtual disk image or something like that within the operating system. So as part of that, um, a lot of folks have failing CD-ROM drives, and it's just going to happen. They've got capacitors just like everything else. Uh, so what do you do? Do you, do you recap uh, your optical drive? Do you try to buy another one uh, that's 30 years old? It's probably just going to need to be recapped anyway. No, my suggestion is this. You get yourself a internal uh, V2 Blue SCSI version 2, and you, uh, <laughs> what you do is you mount it on one of these five and a quarter uh, drive uh, sleds. Uh, this is not, this is a cheese sandwich. This is not like a, a huge breaking idea, but uh, but I did it because I, I had a use case where it's, uh, I've actually got some machines that uh, have wonky uh, optical drives and I needed to get uh, a blue SCSI inside anyway so i figured oh you mount it in the in the five and a quarter bay and and uh and use that to uh to emulate your cds but anyway um I, I did some footage on my iphone and i'm gonna insert that here in this video so you can actually see what some of the measurements and stuff are and maybe get a better idea but keep in mind that this is all going to take uh, a little bit of tweaking kind of on your part uh for your specific machine your specific use case i mean there are variances in plastics and things like that so um, you'll have to play around and figure out how to do it. And maybe at some point in the future, there might be like an actual 3D printed drive sled that, you know, has, uh, you know, uh, stuff to accommodate this. I mean, who knows uh, what somebody might come up with. But in the short term, it's really easy to do with just some two-sided tape. So it's, um, it's just two little layers of some of that super, uh, super sticky black uh, two-sided tape and, uh, and the measurements. You just gotta, you just gotta line it up and kind of tweak it a little bit and it'll work for you. So if you saw my short earlier today, you saw that it was working for me. So I know that with perseverance, a smart person like you can make this two work. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's cut over to the footage of that. In an effort to get some more accurate measurements for folks, I've got my Blue SCSI 2 mounted on a standard five and a quarter inch CD-ROM tray. There are a couple of different revisions, but they do pretty much comply to the same thing. You'll be able to tweak yours in pretty close using some of these measurements I'm gonna provide. I'm gonna be using this caliper that I picked up at Harbor Freight, so your mileage may vary. On the right side, the edge of the PCB to the edge of the tray is 19.22 millimeter. On the opposite side, the measurement is 44.41, ooh, 42 millimeter. Front to back is 61 millimeter. And the thickness from the top of the PCB to the thickest part of the plastic is 11 millimeter. And the way you can accomplish that is by getting some of this thin, ultra strong two-sided tape. I think I picked this up at uh, Lowe's maybe. Um, it is, it's rated like super tough, but I mean, your store might call it something different. It's just over 1.35 millimeters thick. As you can see, the adapter is not pushed all the way into the socket. It's basically you get it close and then you should be able to run like a fingernail down through there just to give it like a tiny bit of space to make sure that it mates up well. Um, you're gonna do this a time or two just to dry fit before you go for any kind of final uh, stick them in place kind of deal. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you, if you have it out 
more. That's that's a nice little last uh, line of defense strain relief for, for when you plug it into the socket. So that way that you don't stress anything too much, especially the connection uh, kind of in your Mac because these plastics can sometimes be brittle. Well, there you have it. Kind of, like I said, kind of a bit of a cheese sandwich, right? <laughs> so, but in any, any case, um, thank you very much for stopping by this evening. Uh, I really appreciate your time. And remember, kind of as I always say, Apple II forever. Don't forget, for only a dollar a month, you can sponsor me over on Patreon.com, like some of these cool kids.